Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is a very impromptu video because I, I guess we, no, more like me. Um, I felt inclined to make a video regarding Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald. We want to talk about what we liked about the movie, what we didn't like, and kind of just an overall review about our experience uh, with seeing this movie. So um, I have a list and uh, yeah, so we're just going to rattle it off. Dive on in. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with the things that we liked about the movie. And also why I wanted Jonathan to be part of this was since he's not like a crazy super fan like I am and like most of you probably are. So I think it's interesting for someone like him to see the movie and kind of give their review because I've kind of heard a lot of mixed reviews on what people thought about the movie and if they liked it if you're not like a super fan. So that's why I wanted him to kind of give his uh, experience. My expert opinion. Yes, his okay. expert opinion on this movie We're not as well. not playing games. Okay, so starting with the things that we liked about the movie, I really liked all the new characters. I liked that um, they had a lot of new characters and that I enjoyed the actors that played the characters. I think that for the most part, all of the actors that um, were placed into new character roles all did a really good job. And uh, there's one that we didn't like, but we'll talk about that yeah. when we go through the stuff we didn't like about the movie. So, so in this movie, another thing that I really enjoyed was the backstory, which I think I feel like two ways about this. I feel like I like that there was a lot of backstory, but I also don't like that there was so much backstory in this movie. So I feel like I'm gonna like go back and forth with this. It's not just gonna be like things we liked and things we didn't like. So I, I'm just gonna talk about it all. So with the backstory part, um, I thought it was interesting because there was a lot of little clues that like <laughs> I butter. Butter's trying to find a way up. Um, there was a lot of like Harry Potter clues obviously throughout the entire movie where you find connections because obviously it's all connected in a way. But um, I thought that that was interesting and fun to follow. But at the same time, I feel like it was extremely hard to follow because since this wasn't a book before seeing the movie, we're just kind of seeing it and learning everything while we're watching. And I feel like it's harder to do that with a movie versus a book because you can't like go back and read something again and again and stop and like think about it when you're reading it. A movie is just happening right there. So it was a lot at once to try to follow and think about throughout the entire movie. I felt confused and lost and like trying to patch things together. So that was something that was like really hard for me. I think and, at the same time you started putting things, at first it took a while for things to kind of come together, but eventually mm -hmm. they started coming together. You just kind of had yeah. to like, you really had to think about it. Yeah, you had to think about it like the entire time through, which once you learn like the first like few characters and everything like that, it's okay. But still there's some confusion of like who everyone is. And like even before I saw this movie, I was like doing research online about the characters and everything, trying to figure stuff out because I knew that it was gonna be hard to follow if I didn't. And so that's kind of a lot for someone. So like someone like Jonathan, how did you feel about trying to follow it when you had no idea who any of these characters were? Well, the, yeah, I didn't, I, I think I knew as much as you did coming into it as far as not knowing who they were gonna present as characters. Well, I, I knew all the new characters. I mean like, what about Lita Lestrange? Yeah, I knew who you she knew was. She, you knew who she was? I knew who she was. Okay. Um, I found myself confused, but not confused in certain parts. Um, I was putting it together, but not as fast as you were, I don't mm -hmm. think. But then also- Because you were asking me questions throughout the movie. Yeah. You were just like, Leela Strange, is she related? Wait, and I was- Well, yeah, I, I knew she was related, but I, th for some reason, I thought it was Bellatrix as a kid yeah. when they were flashing. I was like, Bellatrix <laughs> yeah, is not- that was Bellatrix. Bellatrix is white. Because what they were that? just calling her Lestrange, and so he's yeah. like, which is that Bellatrix? I'm like, what is happening? And so but, I could see um, how hard that would be. But then I found myself, I was confusing myself more because I was making predictions in my head about who <laughs> yeah, people were. were. I was like, so I ended up confusing myself more when they come out there. I'm like, wait, that's not it. I'm not even close, you know? But some, I, I was close on some. Yeah, some of them, you're like, that guy's so gonna do that. And then, and then he and did then, it the next scene. He I did know, it. and then you were so, you're like, babe, babe, like, 
I'm like, you can't. What was the one prediction I made and it happened like right after that it happened? I don't remember, but it's so annoying because in this movie, like, oh, you uh, can't stop for two seconds and like talk who was because it? the constant conversation oh. they're having, you're, I'm like trying to listen and he's trying to talk in my ear. <laughs> no, I called it with um, the polyjuice potion as the guard. Oh, yes. Grindelwald. I was yes, like, that's so not Grindelwald. Into I his, said that's yeah. not Grindelwald. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I bet he took Polyjuice Potion, that's actually the guy. And then all of a sudden his face started going Yeah, literally crazy. two seconds later his face started morphing back into the guard. Yeah. So, um, yes. I feel like following the story was hard and I think yeah. that if you are not a super fan and know a lot about Harry okay. Potter to be able to follow it, okay. or you didn't even like maybe do research before like I did, it would be confusing. And Jonathan's even an exception because he he does know quite a bit about Harry Potter because of me. But it's kind of a standard. Yeah, I mean he has to because it's all I talk about. But if it was like my parents who don't know a lot about Harry Potter really. I think they would be so lost and they wouldn't think yeah. it was a good movie. Yeah. Because like the first Fantastic Beast, I thought it was a great movie even by itself. Anyone could like, kind of anyone follow Anyone could that. follow that movie yeah. and think it was good. But this one, they, they were- turned, They, they tied were, stuff together. Yeah, and they were trying harder. so hard to connect things to Harry Potter. Like it seemed like they were trying really hard to do that and you could tell by like bringing in like Nicholas Flamel, which is like one of the things that I'm confused about because there just doesn't, Anyways, but can't wizards live extra long like the time like Dumbledore was what 150 200 years old or something? I, I guess he was actually based on the timeline of when he was born. He was like 115. Yeah, so he's really old I mean, I think that could explain some of it to eat. You're killing me, bro No, but there's some I'll I'll get to like the questions area of things that don't make sense to me or things I'm wondering about in a minute, but for now we just want to talk about what we liked and what we didn't so I don't want to act like we didn't like the movie because we did. But I thought it was good. It was it was a it was a good movie. But I think it's, it could be misinterpreted, like you said, it yeah. could be mis misinterpreted to the common person mm -hmm. that just like liked Fantastic Beasts for whatever yeah. reason. But maybe they're not that into Harry Potter. Maybe mm -hmm. they're just just a typical fan. You know, I yeah. wouldn't say you're a typical fan. I'd no. say you're like, you know, it's beyond obsession with you. Yeah. So. I think to it a, could a come normal off as person, they, I could see them being bored. Like my dad was probably super bored. I, yeah. Like I kind of peek over at him and he'd like. Kind you know, of I could see him off. kind of nodding off, like because yeah. in the middle, especially, it was a lot of talking. It was a lot of, mm -hmm. it was a lot of. It's a typical like trilogy, like movie series or book series, whatever you want to call them. The the first one's usually introduction to a lot of new stuff, like in Fantastic Beasts, where there's a lot of new animals, a lot of new characters. So it's like it's keeping you into it, and then the it's second the one is build up towards the grand finale yeah. and the third one. That's how they're doing movies these days. So the second one is always a lot of story, a lot of background, a lot of information. And then the third one is always when everything pops off. Yeah, I think that's what this the purpose of this movie was too. I guess um, I guess I was more just like disappointed with some things. And that's like, I guess we'll talk about more of like what we didn't like because the stuff that we did like was pretty typical. Like we like the characters. We, I loved going back to Hogwarts and seeing that. That was great, especially seeing like all their different um robes and their attire and everything like different stuff like that but i guess it's better if we just talk about the stuff that was kind of weird so like so one of the first things obviously like we said was it was hard to follow second thing we're not in love with grindelwald's character the choice just being like johnny depp in general it's very it's just like whatever i don't know it, the thing about harry potter that was cool is from the very beginning harry potter picked a lot of characters I would say, besides like a couple, obviously from the series, but they made stars out of Harry Potter characters. Mm -hmm. Like the, the the kids were never obviously they were too young, but I guess it makes sense because they needed kids. It would be hard to find a bunch of star kids, but even a lot of the other characters they were just randoms, you know, and they made them kind of into stars. Mm -hmm. With this, I feel like they've taken, especially with Grindelwald. A guy that already has history, so it's hard not to see like Jack Sparrow and Grindelwald. You know, that's that's all I saw. I yeah. think it would have been a perfect spot for them to take someone that's up and coming. Come on. I think it would have been a good spot to take someone that was up and coming and just, you know, had some hype around them maybe. Maybe maybe diehard movie fans know about him. But I think it would have been a really good spot to build a star out of. It would have been a good role. It gives it that 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 character has a lot of options and uh you know, for to have an actor, you know, really display mm -hmm. their their talents. Yeah. Every time I looked at him, and the thing is, 
if he would have done like an incredible acting job and really made me believe it was Grindelwald, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Probably, because all I thought about the whole time was, was Johnny Depp. Oh yeah, all Depp. I could like, think that's of all I could think about. He like, whereas Jude Law, yeah, I saw Dumbledore uh, in him a hundred. That first scene with him, all his mannerisms and his facial expressions throughout it, I yeah. believed it was Dumbledore. Yeah, I, I literally was like, him. wow, this could really be Dumbledore mm -hmm. as a younger, you know, male. He made me believe his character, and I feel like he truly cared but about his Johnny character. Depp Johnny Depp just, yeah. I saw like every time I, he was in a scene, all I saw was like Jack Sparrow or you know I could just all I could imagine was him from other movies and mm -hmm. I think that's part of him just not doing that great of a job yeah and I don't think he did bad I don't think he did good I just think it was just whatever which Grindelwald is a base character base character from the series I think he's one of the most important if not the most important I think a lot of it is based around him you know I don't think I don't think they would be making these movies movies without him yeah he's the, the number one antagonist yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I, I just think I expected a lot, I guess. Yeah, I think that like, you know, leads us into like things that w were disappointing. And so I think his performance was disappointing to us. It was just very bland. Yeah, very, uh, very bland. And then I think just based on the trailers, because there were so many trailers that came out, I thought that there was going to be so much more to the movie than what there was. Because even with all of the backstory that we got, at the end of the day, I feel like... I'm still very confused and I was not giving given any answers. So one of the main points that like kind of was weird to me was there was a lot of hype around learning about Nagini and like all of the stuff about her being a maledictus and like, you know, seeing her and all this kind of stuff when I think she had like three lines in the entire movie and we learned nothing about her except for the fact that the snake is a woman. They did leave a there question mark at the end. nothing about that. To though. me, they left a question mark at the end, though. With what? Is she going to be in the third one? I think she will. Because, because Credence... They gave, they gave us nothing. Well, yeah, but, but Credence has been fully taken to the dark side now. Although, they, like they said at the end, he's not sure if he wants to be here, if he made the right choice. But that leads me to believe, well, is she just done? Is she just not going to be there because he's doing his own thing now? He has a different mission. I feel like he left her. I feel like Newt will probably take her on. They'll be Maybe. kind of creating different alliances. Maybe to... they they may use her to try to get him back. Maybe, but Could there be. like there wasn't a lot of context behind her character, and so I guess I was disappointed in that because I was so excited to learn more about who she was, and she barely talked. We didn't yeah. really learn anything about her, so that was kind of a disappointment. Along with the amount of scenes that Dumbledore was in, I was super excited about him. And the scenes that he was in, like we said, we loved him as that character. But he wasn't in the movie very much. No, like, he was in I it think, in the beginning and a little bit in the end. I think, again, that, that was, was much it. that's build up for the final yeah, one. I think, I think he's so going to be he's gonna be the star in the final one, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Well, there's three more movies. Oh, there's three more. Yeah. So it's not just going to be, like, one last movie. No, there's three more. So it's gonna be a while before we figure anything out. It just sucks. I guess my disappointment comes from the fact that we've been waiting two good, years though. for this movie. But I think it's and good. And we didn't learn that much. And now we have to wait another two years to learn anything else. And I, so that's where like my irritation so is. So to me though, it makes, it, I think it's good because how many times have we seen like, um, what's the series? The Hunger Games series. I feel like people that read it were like the first one and then the number two and three they didn't care for mm -hmm. and I think partially because you can never fit Everything a book has to offer into movies. Well, this was this wasn't a book So that's what makes it hard. But yeah, but there's a lot. I think there's a lot they wanted I think there's a lot yeah, they want to say so I think it's good that they're not give They're not just trying to jam-pack everything into one movie mm -hmm. You know, I think it's good They give you a little bit of information and they create a lot of depth behind it You know for what we did learn in this movie. There was a lot of depth, you know, they get they went into it a lot you know, there, not a lot happened, but mm -hmm. everything that did happen, you had an un somewhat of an understanding for. I think there's a lot they kind of left cliffhangers here and there for the yeah. next movie, but I think we're, it's just going to grow in information. Yeah, I'm, I feel like the third one's definitely going to come out pretty strong, and like because it's going to be a, I feel like it's going to start a war pretty much between the two sides, the Grindelwald followers, and then True. the good side. Because that's kind of like how it ends, where Newt and his brother are on the same side now, and something's gonna happen. Obviously, I think it. I think it was it was good in the sense that it's definitely keeping us like holding on in the magic and the wizarding world like so relevant still because there's so much more to learn. But I guess I just wish that we would have gotten a little more from this movie because I usually come out of every Harry Potter movie or any kind of like this franchise just like in love. 
and I definitely thought it was a good movie, but I think it it left me more disappointed than any movie ever has in the Wizarding like movies, which was kind of frustrating. And I feel even bad saying that because anything but, that J.K. Rowling creates, I just want to like say it's amazing. But, but this it, is the only one that's I've been like, mm, I mean, it was good. And I think maybe if I saw it a second time, maybe yeah. I would enjoy it more. I think you could also, you could be feeling that way because the other ones had books, aside from number one. Mm -hmm. But then, like we said, number one, the first movie of a new series like that is always going to be giving you a lot. It's going to be entertaining. Yeah. So I think it that's to why. To this like this one you. is kind of the boring one to give you backstory. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that's why yeah. you feel that way. What I'm disappointed about as well is Lita Lestrange dying. As far as we know. As far as we know. I mean, we all thought Credence was dead in the first one, too, and he ended up so, not being. So my, I'm hoping that she's not actually dead. Okay, things that confused me or things I have questions about. So one of the things was I thought it was amazing that Nicholas Flamel came back. He's, like, so cute, and Jonathan loved his character. Stud. Like, he's such a badass at the Absolute end. Absolute stud. I was happy we got to see the Sorcerer's Stone and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, yeah, the little cabinet. Yeah, that, that was cool that we got to see that. Um, disappointed in the fact that we didn't see it like in use or how he uses it or anything because that would have been cool for him to like do something with it. So Maybe he will. See. Maybe that's why they showed us. They might. And um, also wondering like really why his character is involved with this because... What do you mean why? Well, because I just... It's I don't. Stud. No, but like... Why is he involved with what's going on? I don't know. I don't remember anything in Harry Potter where um, he was like part of the whole Grindelwald thing. But maybe but it's just really something that depth. we don't really know about. So it might be just something new. So I'm just curious. I just feel like I have so many questions. And that's why maybe I feel frustrated because there's so many things I'm just like, well, why did they bring this in and not give us any information? Why did they tell us about this and not tell us why? Why did they tell us this? And then... Like, I don't know. I'm so confused. Another big question mark about the whole movie is regarding McGonagall. I'm sure as you guys ah, know. Another stud. Uh, I'm sure as you guys know, she was not born. She was not born yet when this movie even is taking place or they show her back in school teaching when Newt was in school. So that was even a couple years before this movie took place and she wasn't even born yet. So, obviously I'm confused over that, on how she would do that. And for a second I was like, oh, maybe it was her great-grandma because she had her same name, but McGonagall is not actually her great-grandma's name, that was her muggle father's name. So, can anyone answer that question, why she's there? Someone said that maybe she would use a time turner to go back in time, but why would she go back in time to teach new? Yeah, I don't, I don't, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But she would have no reason to know that anything was happening before her time. I mean, well, I mean, Dumbledore maybe she would have told story. her to go back for some reason. Oh, maybe, I guess, yeah. Because there's no other, like, I feel like J.K. Rowling doesn't But wouldn't she look the same, though? Or would she be younger? But she's not going back to pri prior she would time. Go, she would go back when she started Hogwarts, when she was, like, in her 20s. Oh. Wouldn't that be weird, though? People would be like, oh, we have a new teacher. Hi, young, I don't, random. I don't know. That's don't exactly know. my question. I, I don't, I don't really. I, I think don't... it's some sort of family member. It's one way or another, somehow. It's the only thing that makes sense. But McGonagall <laughs> comes from her muggle father's name. Okay. Well, I don't know. So that's why I'm confused. I don't if anyone know. could tell me their theories on this, because I have none about the whole McGonagall thing. It's very weird, and I don't Maybe think it was a mistake. Maybe she ages slower because she's a cat. She wasn't born yet. She wasn't even born. Maybe she ages slow. That doesn't matter. But what could. she would. You never know. How would that make her arrive in the twenties? Don't know. Nothing. That makes no sense. It could. No. I'm never wrong. Okay, what questions do you have? Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, the real obvious one. Yeah, the biggest one. The big so obvious we've one. Reached, we've reached the biggest question, which I'm sure everyone is waiting. Dumbledore. Like, did, did, did he just rename him? Did he just rename him to piss him off? Like, is he trying to manipulate him and make him think that's his old brother? Yeah. Because that could be something. He's trying to maybe manipulate him to keep him on his side mm -hmm. somehow because he's young and impressionable and he has all this anger and rage and doesn't know how to use it. Yeah. I don't know. So I have some I don't theories. know the backstory to Dumbledore and all that, so that's like on you. Yeah, yeah. I have theories of what... So pretty much, I'm sure you guys know what happened. Uh, Grindelwald told Credence that he's actually a Dumbledore and he said that phoenixes like arise when they're in the presence of Dumbledores and he like brought out a phoenix, it came to him, but whatever. Pretty much saying that he is Dumbledore's brother. 
Um, he also said your brother's trying to kill you. He also said your brother's trying to kill you, which is weird because Dumbledore's not trying to kill him. No, but he, that's what I'm saying. Maybe he's lying to him to make him. Yes. So the biggest thing I think that everyone is thinking okay. is that Grindelwald is yeah. lying to Credence just to get him on his side. Just to get him on his side and to believe him and to try to defeat Dumbledore. But the thing that's keeping people to, like making people believe that he could actually be a Dumbledore is because of the whole Phoenix thing. Yeah, but then... Another thing that doesn't make sense is why would he tell him he's his brother? You know what I mean? Like if someone told me, hey, your brother's trying to kill you, that wouldn't really give me, that wouldn't give me uh, like more reason to want to fight somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then I don't see him as my enemy. I'd be like, well, he's my brother. I would rather work things out than try to kill him. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't so know that how Credence really is going to take it just because of the fact that this whole movie is pretty much based around him trying to find his home, his family, and so if Grindelwald tells him that he's a Dumbledore, he might want to learn more about that and still wonder who his mom is, which if it's if he's actually his brother, his mom could be Kendra or not, and then Percival would be his father. But here's okay, so we can get into I guess I'll just talk about my theories in this video. I was gonna wait for another video for my theories, but might as well. So the only way for like Yesterday I spent a lot of time doing research on these characters and the timeline to try to understand how this would make sense for Credence to be a Dumbledore based on like the Percival and Kendra being his parents because of the fact that we know from this movie that Credence was born in 1904 it doesn't make sense for those to be his parents because they were both already dead by that time so the thing I'm wondering is maybe we don't actually know Credence's birthday right. If he was born just four years earlier, in 1900 or 1899, he could possibly still be Percival's son, or even even Kendra's possibly. Um, but then again, is Percival was in Azkaban, so I don't know how that would work. I don't know if they're allowed to hmm. get it on in Azkaban. Not in Azkaban. Nope, that's like maximum security prison. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how it would work for him to be one. Oh, okay, one of the theories that I saw online was that Ariana's Obscurial left her body when she died, which was in, I think, 1899, and attached itself to another host, being Credence. So that's actually like Ariana's Obscurial. Who's Ariana? Dumbledore's sister Oh, that died. Hmm. So, so maybe... it attached to Credence, and so it's kind of like Credence and Ariana as like one. Could be. Cause that I could see that being possible with the way they like do crazy yeah, shit. That could be somewhat where they're not like blood brothers, but more mm -hmm. spiritually. Yeah. Because then it could would be. make sense, cause it's not like their parents had another baby no, or anything right. like that. It was just the obscurial because once, cause we saw in the first one that an obscurial can live by itself, but it's pretty much useless if it doesn't have a host. So if Ariana died in her obscurial was this ball and then eventually attached itself to baby Credence and somehow Grindelwald found out, then that could totally be possible. That that's why he thinks that like, that's his brother. Is there a way to get rid of an obscurial once it attaches? I think you have to kill yourself. The person. Shucks. I think the host usually dies, but the squirrel could live. Okay, another theory would That's be um, Percival had a sister whose last name would also be Dumbledore in that case. And if she had a baby, then that could make Dumbledore Albus. And if that baby ended up being Credence, it could make Credence and Albus cousins. Not siblings, but they could still both have the name Dumbledore. Um, and then obviously the last one is just he's lying to him. And it's making all of us go crazy, but it's actually nothing. It could really be nothing. That's my number one answer right now. Credence is very, I feel like, vulnerable at yeah, this exactly. point. And so he's willing to believe anyone. And since Grindelwald is known to pretty much manipulate people and make them believe what he wants, I think that it's easy for like, you know, him to do that to him. Along with the fact that Grindelwald has that like power of kind of like seeing things and showing people things kind of like when they were all in that huge like Meeting and he showed him that whole war That's another thing that was kind of weird and I don't really understand it, but um, He could have easily shown Credence something out of context that 
was like this is your family but it wasn't right. actually to make sense to him so i'm not sure he's pretty powerful too he's a very who grindelwald yeah he's very powerful grindelwald and he's very charismatic they've been saying that's why he's yeah. gotten every single guard they had to said they had to change guards like four times or whatever mm -hmm. because he just kept turning them and making you know he has sociopathic tendencies you yeah. <laughs> know I'm sorry this, uh, what is this, kind of like a review chit chat was so all over the place, but there was so many things that, this is like how my brain worked after the movie. It was all over the place, so it's hard to like we put went, this into a structural way, yeah. but we did go through a lot of like, I think we went in important, <laughs> the importance of uh, topics. I yeah. think we did pretty good, but yeah, yeah they, they do go different ways. I don't think there's any right way to go yeah, about it. Yeah, it's like a big branch that no. just kind of like goes all over. But I want you guys in the comments below to kind of start a discussion of your thoughts on the crimes of Grindelwald along with your theories. I want to know theories about the Dumbledore Credence thing, the McGonagall thing. I want to know what you think about Dumbledore's and Grindelwald's relationship and Nicholas Fumel. Like, talk about anything you want down there. Um, because I'm really interested in obviously this is like making me feel like I'm losing sleep because I'm just <laughs> so interested. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see new videos weekly that are mostly Harry Potter related. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks to my hubby for joining me to talk about this. Um, it was a good time and I'll see you guys next week with a new video. Bye! <laughs> you didn't say it.